From the EPAWA headquarters in South Allentown, Pennsylvania, it's time for Weather Weeklies, an informative video of the ins and outs of weather that affect you most in the EPAWA coverage area. The following segment is a weekly video blog, and the opinions of the forecaster do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the staff of Eastern PA Weather Authority LLC as a whole, nor its constituents. Without further ado, here is meteorologist Bobby Martris with Weather Weeklies. And another edition of Weather Weeklies for Sunday, December 27th. Uh, we're going to go into the long range as we always do in these videos and uh, give us a little bit of insight here on what to expect here for Monday night. So uh, we'll go into the long range table first, and I'm going to try to keep this uh, th this entire video shorter than uh, what we've had been lately. I've been going uh, a little bit too long-winded. Uh, I'd like to keep under 15 minutes. Last week was 21 minutes. So we're trying to uh, keep to the important stuff here and uh, cut out a little bit of the, the redundant stuff that I talk about every single week. If you have previous, uh, you, you all, everybody has access on YouTube to the previous videos, so we can always uh, rewatch those if you needed the educational part of things. Here is a look at our long-range forecast table for this week. Uh, of course, this was updated here on Christmas Eve. So we have the uh, series of fronts over here the next couple of days. going to have above normal through the 28th. Uh, and then we're going to have uh, temperatures here. Actually, we're going to stay above uh, above normal uh, past the 28th as well. But uh, we're going to have a, a winter storm that's going to affect uh, parts of our area here. There's a whole bunch of uh, typing in here about uh, where how we're watching northeastern PA, uh, east central PA, northern New Jersey mostly. Um, still doing that, but the models have certainly trended differently uh, from what they were a couple days ago due to the energy in the west being sampled differently. So, uh the winter storm here shown around the first and second has now been shown by most models and samples to stay offshore and that was either going to be an, uh, a snow event or a miss out to sea it's really favoring the miss out to sea at this point uh, but here we go into january here and january only a couple days away of course uh, we have the temperature in the first half uh, first 10 days of the month slightly below average and the entire month as a whole average is slightly below average with near normal snowfall so uh, we're not expecting to just uh, break into uh, this this pattern change which we're expecting to uh, occur right around the 31st or 1st uh, we're not expecting this to go right you know into into the snow and and, and uh, blizzards every other week or anything like that I'm not sure if that was a misconception by a lot of people but uh, we do have near normal snowfall for the month of January so nothing over the top just yet but we do think we get there uh, when we start getting into some blocking, we'll get into that here in a little bit. Here's the Madden Julian Oscillation. Of course, we were talking about eastward prop propagating convection along the equator here. I'm not going to go into a big explanation of what the Madden Julian Oscillation means. I went into a very detailed explanation of that last week. But this convection, the best convection forcing, is taking place here in a phase six area. It is continuing to move east towards the international date line, which of course is right here. Uh, once it gets in this area here, these are the, your favorable areas here for convection to be in order to get to a, some troughiness in the eastern United States. And we do see that having an effect on our pattern here going forward. As we go into uh, the different phase cycles here, again, I'm going to go over these very briefly, what these mean. Uh, this is just positions along the equator where this is located, where the best convection is located. What we're looking for are cold phases here are phases 1, 2, and 3 in January and also phase 8. This is a cool phase here in, uh, like got a transition here um, into a cooler phase here. And this would be uh, what, we're, what we're looking at going into next. Uh, this is a warm phase in phase 6, warm phase phase 5, and warm phase phase 4. So uh, this is where we were. We were in phase 4, obviously record warmth in December, phase 5, record warmth. Phase 6 is still very, very warm, so we're getting those temperatures uh, very warm. As a matter of fact, if you're watching this video on Sunday, uh, it is expected to be uh, temperatures near record highs again. So we're right in this phase six. That's a result of that. So you get into toward the, the end of phase seven. That's the end of this month. This is when we get into transition here. We're not. We're only slightly above. We get uh, slightly above average temperatures here, and this is not. And that's what we're looking dealing with up until about the 31st. Then we go into phase eight. Phase eight is like the first nine days of January. This is a cold phase, and it will be cold. Uh, not over the top cold here but we will be seasonably cold here for that time time frame for the most part for the first uh, 10 days of january phase one is also a cold phase phase two and phase three and you see where it's going here uh the red line indicates where we've been 
the black dot is where we are on uh, this is on Christmas Day. This is the day after. So we're right about here today, right about here, right in the middle of that warm phase. And then you see where it's going. It's going through phase seven and then into phase eight here, uh, ending up in either in phase one as a weak phase one signal or maybe into the circle of death, which means the forcing near the date line would still be in a good position just because of the El Nino forcing. Uh, where the warmest waters are. So that's the Madden Julian Oscillation. So that's all looking good right now. This is the European Ensembles that I used here, not the European Operational. Much better tool to use to use the Ensembles that you have a lot more uh, members to deal with rather than just one operational run. The problem has been the Polar Vortex, and, and that is has been locked up here in the North Pole. Uh, and, and just the winds just go all the way around it or, you know, uh, rotate around this thing. Going the wrong way here. Polar Vortex uh, just uh, continues though the winds running all the way around this thing and uh, it's locked up here consider it like a fence like there's a there's a barrier where this cannot go any further it just keeps going all the way around the globe really fast and uh, cold can't go down south warm can't go north and you just have this stuck just right around the Arctic Circle here well a uh, series of sudden stratospheric warming events that it has occurred and it has actually helped to displace this polar vortex and we knew that if we we're going to get some cold air to come down in the into our half of the United States the eastern half the cold polar vortex would have to be displaced from the North Pole uh, further south and east and we are seeing that signs of that in the long range here finally coming into the models we're, we're a little we're kind of talking about this for a couple of weeks here where this we thought this was going to happen because what was going on in the stratosphere we knew it was a two three week lag time well the models don't go out that far so we're waiting for these to uh, kind of show up here on the model guidance themselves and uh, we are seeing that happen here. Here is the uh, here's the G uh, the the GFS ensemble showing that now, where you have it uh, starting to displace down further south. Here you have a huge huge ridge moving up here in Alaska here, uh, and then a deep trough over here in the eastern United States. So you have that that troughiness here. This is where the cold air is going to be here as we head into around the 10th of January. I think uh, as far as a pattern change is concerned, we're definitely heading into a pattern change. Uh, but it's not going to be, it's going to take us back to seasonable cold, but it's going to be consistently seasonably cold. So nothing uh, crazy below normal, but at the same time, these these days where you're having temperatures in the 50s and 60s are over, and uh, we can see that on, on many other guidance too. Here is the uh, Canadian ensembles doing the same thing. Again, huge uh, warmth up into ridging up into Alaska here, and then you have your deep trough in the east. This is deep enough to get the cold here in the northeast United States, and uh, will definitely be cold here. So if we do have any storms, which are not, are kind of hit or miss weather they're showing right now. Do we do have any storms coming into this area here? Once we get past the 10th or so, they're definitely going to be in the form of a wintry type event. We're not going to be able to cut through the lakes here like we have been doing. Most of our storms have been cutting lately, coming up here like this and cutting right through the Great Lakes. Well, we that puts us on the warm side and you get a nice southeastern ridge that is not shown here in the long range and we're definitely going on and this is every single model I'd show you the European model ensembles as well but I cannot do that due to copyright restraints but uh, again this is a, this is another look here at the GFS ensemble so you can see uh, just with that cold centered right here you have that cold centered here and you got the huge ridging uh, going up here and into Alaska here you have the deep trough coming down here in the eastern half of the United States so at least the cold is there whether it's cold and dry or cold and and snowy, we have to rem what remains to be seen. The models right now are not thrilled, at least in the first ten days of January, of any storm threats. But uh, we'll definitely keep an eye on that because we have some uh, as we get past the tenth or so that we we could start getting some uh, some more st uh, storms in here, even if it does stay dry. And uh, we're remaining cold this entire month, so we this is a true pattern change. This is not something we're waiting on a pattern the pattern to flip here. Um, it might be a little bit one of those deals. Okay, well now it's cold, but it's cold and dry. So, you know, I'd rather it be warm if it's going to do that. They're going to hear a lot of people saying that, but uh, just be patient. We're not expecting again. If you go back to our table here, not expecting January to be above normal snowfall. We're still total, uh, totally snowfall in the, in the month of January to be near normal. We're not turning on the jets as far as precipitation is concerned just yet. But one thing is going to help us here. If you remember back to 19, the 1957-1958 analog was our number one analog that we used. And uh, we showed uh, the comparison in 1958 here, January 1958, and uh, all these things that are happening here uh, in the stratosphere are happening about two weeks earlier, maybe uh, two weeks earlier than what happened in 1958. So 1958, we saw the pattern flip completely the end of January. 
and then we were just game on as far as blocking was concerned and things like that. And we had some really big storms here in both uh, February and March. We might be starting a little bit sooner. So I think the second half of January gets a little bit busier here. And then uh, that lasts right until about the middle of March, I think, where you have some pretty good snowfall amounts in that time frame. Did want to discuss here. Uh, the storm here on the uh, uh, over the in the Monday night to Tuesday time frame, I do think uh, we're going to have at least an east central PA from this point northward, from uh, probably just north of uh, Harrisburg over to about Allentown and northern New Jersey. We have uh, a very cold high sitting up here, um, but it's a progressive high, which means it's moving out, and uh, the area low pressure moving toward us. The the warm front here is moving up in this direction here as well. So you're going to have some cold air or warm air advection that's going to change this over to uh, change this uh, change this sleet and, and freezing rain that starts out as it's going to change that over to uh, plain rain here as the high lifts out and the front moves continues to move northeast. But we will have a start we think uh, probably just briefly here in East Central PA and most of northern New Jersey. But if you get up to uh, northeastern PA, especially the higher ele elevations, and northwestern northern New Jersey for maybe Morris, uh, Morris Passaic, and uh, uh, Sussex counties up here, Orange County, New York, those places will hang on to the icing a little bit longer. It could get uh, about a tenth of an inch of ice accrual up on that area after a little bit of snow. Maybe that might coat the ground, say coating up to an inch, probably less than an inch in most areas up here for snow. Uh, but then it goes over to sleet, freezing, rain. You might keep that all, again, another tenth of an inch of of ice on top of that before it changes over to rain there too. So this is not uh, what uh, a big snow event. Again, one of those uh, one of those storms that is just going to uh, just run to this cold high that just timed perfectly that give us a little bit of wintry precip. One of the things that uh, we're going to talk about is as far as the pattern change is going to be uh, basically going to be happening at the end of the month here, and we have. Uh, this is a look at uh, the uh, the morning of New Year's Eve, and we're going to have the, a system moving in uh, Wednesday night into Thursday that day. This is next week, and the system here is the low pressure that's going to be pulling away here, uh, moving up in this direction. This is going to be a rain event, uh, but behind this, once this moves out, you have a front move through the cold front through the cold air is going to be coming in behind this, and it's going to lock in and stay here. So this is the storm that's going to do it. And it's going to move it out, uh, move, move, bring in the cold air behind it as it moves away. And I'll show you that here on a graphic I like to use here. This is a uh, this is looking at uh, the future temperatures. And I took uh, I took Allentown, Pennsylvania, because it's the probably the centermost point of our coverage area when you consider we have all of Eastern PA. New Jersey and Delaware. So it's probably the centermost point, but it's pretty indicative of everywhere across our coverage area here. These are the temperatures we've been at dealing with. The median temperatures up here are 60s and near 70, and I mean, this has been just a really warm week. But then we drop down here uh, again on Monday, Tuesday. Monday, we're, we're still in the 40s here this week here until this is the phase seven MJO week here still slightly above average temperatures. Normal highs in Allentown right now are about 38. But as you get into here's your here's your 40 degree line right here this is the 40 degree line uh, for Allentown you can see once that pattern changes here and we, we don't see any of this up and down and this nonsense anymore we're all going below normal temperatures or actually temperatures near I should say near near to slightly below in this area here going this entire week here all the way up this goes all the way up to the eighth here these are highs these are the forecast lows here on the bottom image here but uh, this week here we're going into phase eight of the Matt and Julian oscillation. So we're seeing temperatures respond by staying at or below normal. This is seasonable cold. This is not uh, overwhelming cold. This is not talking about, we're not talking about temperatures 15 degrees below normal. We're talking about temperatures that are going to be really close to normal. It's cold, seasonable cold for January, what it's supposed to be in January. So we're expecting that this week here coming up uh, is in the first uh, 10 days or so of January and then we'll see where the pattern goes after that point but it looks like we're going to get even colder yet with we, we look at these ensembles but uh, just to give you an idea that we're pretty consistent we're going to be back into a cold pattern this is definitely a pattern change it might not be a brutal cold but who wants that anyway the, the ensembles are showing that nicely that this once this sets up and you get that ridging here uh, going all the way up into the Gulf of Alaska here. It's gonna be pretty impressive and that gets this cold to dive down here in the east And that looks like it's gonna stay for quite a while. I'm Eastern PA Weather Authority meteorologist Bobby Marchers And that is this edition of Weather Weeklies for Sunday, December 27, 2015. See you again next Sunday.